If you do not, just raise your hand and uh, we'll get that. Okay. 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 Thank you, Reese. Amen. Good job. Thank you, sweetie. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you this evening for those that gave their times and all things. Lord, we thank you for the blessings of our life, Lord. And God, we just ask that you bless us 30, 60, 100 for the Lord. And uh, Lord, we just pray that we get to be used mightily for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, tonight we are doing lesson eight. We are moving right along. Um, and soon we'll be wrapping up the series on the believer's authority. And so I pray that each night that we meet, you guys take up, you know, at least a little nugget or something that you can apply and, and grow in. And so. Uh, we're going to go over those things this evening. And tonight's lesson is authority over demon spirits, not human wills. Um, it's going to be kind of a quick uh, series tonight. It's not very long, and so um, so we'll just jump in this evening. So go ahead and get your Bibles out, and we're going to get reading. We're going to start where we have been starting here lately in Romans 5.17. So if you would, just go ahead and turn there. Romans 5.17 in the New Testament, it says, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. And so just to go over that, we've been going over that verse many times, and I pray that it's getting instilled in your spirit, man, that you are ruling and reigning in this life, and uh, we're to rule and reign in every area. And so um, those areas that uh, we need to work on, we can give them to God, and we can uh, have God help us in those uh, areas to rule and reign. So to rule and reign is to have the authority, the, the dominance, and the, the kingship. So we're, we're sons and daughters uh, to God, and so we get to live that life. So I pray that's been encouraging you that you're to reign in life and it is bringing you up and out of maybe some things where we're at, where we're at in our lives. And so we're, we're going to have to start walking out the ruling and reigning in our lives. And then let's turn to 2 Corinthians 5, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. It says, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And so here it tells us that we're the righteousness in God. This is kind of a recap of last time. But we are the righteousness of God, and it's through Christ Jesus. So you have right standing with God because of Jesus Christ. If it wasn't for him, we would not have that right standing to be. Because of what Jesus Christ did, you are now righteous in him. And it's a gift of God. It's nothing that you can work towards or earn it is when you become a child of God it is a gift that he gives to you the gift of righteous and now you are in right standing with God and we get to walk out that righteousness through him and so it says in it's what Jesus did it made him to be sin for us the sin that we had in our life became sin for us so amen so we are the righteousness of God you are the righteousness of God you are in right standing amen and in Ephesians 2, it says that we are saved by grace through faith. Remember, we have the abundance of grace that we talked about last week. We have the abundance of grace, the amazing grace that we have. And also, we had spoken on how the body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Our bodies are precious to God. And what we put in and what we do with our lives need to honor God. And so we need to re remember that, um, you know, the, we want the things of God to go in our lives. And so we got to be careful what we're putting in. And we need to put the word of God in and so that it is a temple that is glorifying God. And, you know, when the enemy comes in, we have to put up a no trespassing sign and say, no, nope, there's no passing into this holy temple. You aren't coming in. You're not having your way. You're not wreaking havoc in my life because we're to rule and reign in all those areas. And so, 
you, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You got to preserve it. You got to take care of it. The Holy Spirit. We're we're spirit led men and women of God. We're supposed to be led by the Spirit. So we have to be careful what we let in and what we allow in our lives. And so we need to move forward with that. All right, First Corinthians. We're going to go back. First Corinthians 15. If you'll turn there with me. First Corinthians 15. 26, 1 Corinthians 15, 26, and 27. It says, The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. So if all things are put under his feet, that means all things are put under our feet. And so we're to rule and reign. He, he has everything under. We have all authority, all dominion. And so we, alongside with Jesus Christ, we have all things under our feet. And so we need to walk as those that are, are uh, you know, strong in the things of God, overcoming, victorious, ruling, and reigning. Amen? Amen. So, we're going to move along. Let's go into our text. That's kind of a recap real quick. Let's go to 1 John. 1 John 4. And we're going to read 1 through 4. It says, this 1 John 4, verses 1 through 4, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So there is a lot in there, but the top, uh, the first verse it says, believe not every spirit. So when we come into things, there, you can't believe every spirit that you come in contact with. You have to know the word, you have to be led by the spirit, you have to be able to recognize spiritual things and so it says believe not every spirit but what are you supposed to do is as you read out it says but try the spirits whether they are of god so if you don't know you need to try them you need to see wh where they are what what kind of spirit is this person working with so it says try the spirits whether they are of god and then verse 2 says and you sh hereby know ye the spirit of god and how should we know it? That if they confess Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, it is of God. And if they say contrary, if they say on the opposite and they don't believe that it's Jesus Christ, then you know they're not of God and they have that spirit of Antichrist. And so we're trying the spirits, we're seeing what is confessing, what is coming out of their mouth, what they're proclaiming. And so you have to try those spirits. Uh, so you can't believe every spirit. But us as men and women of God are led by the spirit. And we know that greater is he that's within us than he that is in the world. And we get in the word and we dig in the word and we hear the voice of God. And the Holy Spirit can speak to us and we can understand uh, what we're working with and what we're coming up against with. And in verse 4 it says, you are of God. We must remember that we're of God. We need to know who we are. We got to recognize who we are in Christ. We're of God. We're part of that family. We're with him. He rules, he reigns, and we rule and we reign. So we get to do it alongside with him. Amen. And, you know, the devil, he came and he, he came and Jesus Christ, he, he conquered him at that cross, at that moment. He felt that he had the victory and he had the, he won over what Jesus did. But then when he went down to hell, he took death, hell, and the grave. Uh, the keys, the tests held in the grave. And he conquered them. He took all that guilt and all the, the sin and the shame and all the things. And he took it and it took that burden on him. And he got justice. Jesus Christ got the justice. He is victorious now. And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And so we win. We're overcomers. And uh, the enemy was stripped of all his authority. He no longer has 
the authority that he once had. As believers, we get to take back that authority that we once lost. And so we need to start living lives that take that authority, that know our authority, that knows our rights, that knows our privileges, and learn them and know what they are in the Word of God and dig and find what they are. We, we don't want to go back to what we used to live and how we used to do things. We want to line our lives up with how Christ wants us to live. That Zoe kind of life, the abundant life. A life that glorifies God, that is nurturing in the things of God and is His nature. So we're, we're alive in Him and we're victorious. And Satan is conquered, he's defeated and... That, that means every area of our life and even sickness and disease, things that we're praying for tonight, uh, we we overcome all that. He's made a way. He, Jesus has done all he, he needs to do, and now we need to step up and do the things that he's called us to do. Amen. Amen. And in God's word, he tells us that we're to rebuke the devil. When things come in our life, we're the ones that have to be doing the next step. And Jesus, like I said, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And he, the word says in James 4, 7, James 4, 7 says, we are told to resist the devil and he will flee from who? From you, correct? So if you resist the devil, he says he will flee from you. So you can rebuke the devil. You resist him and he will flee. The, de the authority over the devil is now... Um, is ours and the responsibility is ours. The ball's in our court now to respond to those things and take a stand. Not to let him come and walk all over us and consume us and things, but we are to overcome, to take authority over those things and rebuke him and do things. It's not Jesus. We're not supposed to cry out and say, hey, Jesus, rebuke the devil for me. He's, he's on my back. <laughs> That's not what we're supposed to do. The word does not tell us to do that. It tells us we're the ones that are supposed to resist him, to rebuke him, to take authority over him, and he will flee from us. So that is our our part, our responsibility now. So we've got to know that. And to rule and reign, we have to know that, don't we? We have to know what our part is so we can rule and reign in this life and to come. We've got to know that. And so now we know that, and so we can walk it out. We can't leave it up to Pastor Brian, right, to always be the one helping us out of and rebuking the devil, right? It's our job, right, as every believer, right? right. It's on our, it's our part. It's our responsibility. And so we get to do that. And so don't, don't let it intimidate you. Don't let fear come in. It, it's, it's, it's taking ground. It's doing what God's called us to do, and, and. I mean, that's exciting. You know, God's put that in our hands because we're the children of God. We are of God. We get to rule and reign in this life. We're the, we're the I guess, like the, the managers of our own lives. Every person, every believer, we're the managers of our lives. And so we get to rule and reign in those areas. And so we get to learn to grow in that. Amen. All right, what time we got? 7.30? All right. Well, let's move into some, to some spiritual warfare here, um, what he was talking on that. Um, and the church, you know, we're to do spiritual warfare. And um, in Acts 3, it, it tells of a story of a lame man who was healed. And um, Peter and John were on their way to the temple. And every day the man sat at the entrance of the gate called Beautiful. So if you want to turn there, it's Acts 3, but I'm just going to kind of talk on it. But he went to the gate called Beautiful, begging for money. He was there every day. He was begging for money. When people would come by, he was begging. And um, and one day he'd ask Peter and John for alms um, as they were walking by. And, and Peter said, um, silver and gold have I, have I not. I don't have silver and gold, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he said, rise up and walk. Right? He said, rise up and walk. And so the man who had been lame from from, you know, from birth, uh, he jumped up and he began walking. And so you guys know the story. And so Peter, they, they, he boldly preached, you know, Jesus in the temple. They went out, they were preaching Jesus the whole time. And, um, and it, it pretty much outraged the priests that were there. They did not want to hear Jesus being preached in the, the temple and what had been going on. And the elders, they wanted to have Peter and and James, uh, John, arrested. 
And so they command them that they, they could not preach Jesus no longer. They forbid them um, to preach in the name of Jesus. And they were released, and they went back to the disciples, right? They went back to them, and they told them everything that had happened. And so I'm going to turn to Acts 4 real quick. Acts 4, 24 <clears throat> through 31. And let's, let's read this. And this is what happened. This is after, um, uh, after they went back, after this all just happened, and they're told, no, you cannot preach here. They went back to the disciples who had been praying. This is what they were saying. Verse 24, Acts 4, 24 says, And when the disciples had heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. Now I want you guys to picture this. Now, Peter and John just got told, okay, you're, you had to kind of put yourself in their shoes. They were just sent out to go preach Jesus, you know, they're, they're on fire for God, you know, they just saw a lame man get healed, and they gave them what was in them, and they poured into this person that needed something, and they got miraculously healed, and so they're, they go in the temple, and they're preaching Christ, Jesus Christ, and they're saying, no, you can't do this anymore, so then there's, they're going back to the disciples, but they're, they're excited, they're, they're passionate for the things of God, and they come back, so they're, they're, passionate with them. We went over this last time. The first thing what they do, they recognize that he was God. And the second thing they were telling, uh, was proclaimed was how awesome the things that he has done. When they went into creation, they started saying it. So in verse 24, it says, Lord, thou art God. So right there, they're recognizing, God, you are the one that is in this. We glorify you. And it says, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all and all that is all that in them is who by the mouth of the servant David has said why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things the kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ for of truth against the holy child Jesus whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determine before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word, by stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. And so they're the church. They were doing what God had called them to do. And it's no different then than it is today. They're the church. We are the church. And they were passionately seeking God, praying for them. And, and when they hear, here they come and then they hear the story of what happened, what just happened. And so they're glorifying God. And they were in such one accord and recognizing who God was and how big their God was. You notice they weren't talking about what the devil did and oh, the devil came in and wreaked havoc in this situation and yeah, we did come out victorious. No, they didn't give glory to the enemy. They did not talk about him doing anything. It was all about how big their God was and how awesome and amazing he is and what he's going to do. And so we need to do that in our lives when we have situations. We need to stop talking what the enemy is doing and start giving God the glory. So these the Christians they never dealt with the devil. They talked about how God big how how big God was, um, and they brought you know it was the word of God. They were bringing it out. They had the word alive in them, and it was coming out. And so we don't want to be those that speak about the devil and what he's doing in every day. We we want to talk about what God's doing. Amen. Amen. And so, and so I'm thankful that we get to we get the opportunity to go and share what God's doing, and we get to do that. And some Christians, um, he was talking here how some Christians have taken spiritual warfare, warfare to a level that's not biblically correct. And he was talking about how um, some were um, screaming and yelling at the devil, you know, and. Um, at the top of their voices, and, you know, we don't need to be doing in that. We know we take authority over things, 
and we, we do it in a, you know, God's an orderly God, and so we know who we are in Christ, and we take authority over things. You know, there's, there's a way to do things, but people did all sorts of um, things. Um, he said at one time, I'm going to read this from the book here, he said during the 70s and 80s, he said Christians um, wore army fatigues and combat boots when they prayed. And others chartered airplanes or rented space on the top floors of skyscrapers. It says they believed the higher they got in the atmosphere, the better they could combat the devil. And the Word of God never tells us to do those things, does it? It sounds like silliness to be doing those things. But you got to get the Word of God in. You know that you're a child of God. You have the authority. You get your life in order, align it up with the Word of God, and know who you are in Christ Jesus and be led by the Spirit be a, a woman or a man of God led by the Spirit hearing His voice and God will speak to you he, He'll lead and guide you and He, you know, we know here many times you pray for people and He prayed for people and um, He would hear the Spirit of God as He go down healing lines um, you know, some people had um, demonic influences in their life and God would, you know speak to him and say, this is the spirit this individual has. And he would, if that person was willing to let those spirits, you know, come out of agreement with those spirits, then he could pray with them and then pray for the healing in their lives. And there's some people that did not want to let go of the demonic influences in their lives. And they would clearly say, no, I don't, I kind of enjoy, you know, what's going on and I don't want to release it. And so he'd have to move on and they couldn't receive their healing because of the demonic influence that they were not wanting to let go in their lives. And so he saw us continuously, but he had to have the word of God alive in him and 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 also this be led by the spirit. You can't just know the word and act on the word without having the spirit of God moving also. And you can't just be just a spirit led individual and not have the word of God as a foundation. The two go hand in hand. You have to have them both. You have to have the Word as a solid foundation inside of you and be led by the Spirit because you have to be able to know the Spirit's leading. Amen? And we have to have our lives in right, standing order. And if there's anything out of alignment, to get it under the blood and repent and churn and keep going for the things of God. Because God has, He's got work for us to do. And we have to be ready and willing to be used by God. And we have to have this house in order. Amen? This body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. We gotta take care of it. We gotta nurture it. We gotta feed it. Just like we do in a natural body, we gotta feed it. And so we gotta be those that are, are feeding ourselves. Um, and it says in Acts uh, 4.31, after Peter and John and the other believers would pray, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And so that was their place, their building, their house. This is our church house. The place can be shaken. God wants to come in and do it, a shaking, a new thing. And he can do that in the here and now. They were in one, one, um, one heart, one mind, one accord. And when the body will come together and do those things, God wants to work miraculous things. Not, you know, I'm, I'm sure some of you have been in services where God's moving and people are shaking and they're shouting and they're hooping and hollering. But their place was shaken after this. Their house. Could you imagine the broken chains of that building? And just the place was shaken because God was there. They were in so such a tune with God that the Spirit of God came in. And what an awesome thing. And that was the early church. But there's nothing different from them that we can have now. We can have that same thing. We just got to get our lives in order and know who, who God is in our lives and rule and reign in this life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, let's turn to our study guide. And um, some of these, we're going to, I'll give you guys the answer on these. But if you know them, just we'll shout them out. And if we don't know them, I'm going to give them to you. So go ahead and get your, your study guide out. All right. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, number one, it says, we have what over demons, but not over another person's. We have authority over demons, but not over another person's. Will. Will. Good job, you guys. So we have authority over demons, praise God. 
but not over another person's will. All right. Two, if someone doesn't want to be uh, yeah, you can put delivered, helped, delivered. We can't help them. If they choose to hang on to it, um, you guys can put helped and then help. If they don't want to come out of agreement with what's inside them, there's nothing you can do because God gave us a free will. We're not going to, you're not going to go over what their will is for their life. You know, they have to say, yes, I want to come out of agreement. Otherwise, there's nothing, they've, they've tied your hands to helping them. All right, number three, it is within our authority to break the power of the devil over a family member's life. So it's break and then family members. So it is within our authority to break the power of the devil over a family member's life. So your family that you have, your kids, um, you know, whoever's in your household, your family, you they are yours to take care of, okay? And so you can have the authority to break off what the enemy is doing. Like uh, like if our kids or something's going on with our kids or maybe they had, um, you know, maybe a, a nightmare or something and we can take authority over what the enemy is trying to bring in or something. We can do that because they're, they're our family, they're in our fluence, they're under our household. So that is what you can do. Amen? All right. Number four. We know from the what that we have spiritual authority. From the Word, from the Bible, we know from the Bible that we have spiritual authority. But what we must depend on who to help us in ministering that authority? On the Holy Spirit. Good job. So we must depend on the Holy Spirit to help us in ministering that authority. We can't do it by ourselves. So we know from the Bible that we have spiritual authority, okay? It tells us that we have the authority, okay? You're a child of God, you have the authority, but we must depend on the Holy Spirit to help us in ministering that authority. And that's what I was saying, the two and two go hand in hand. You have to have both, okay? All right, number five. If we try to exercise our authority to see if it is, if it is, I'm oh, sorry. If we try to exercise our authority to see if it, it will work, it won't work. And the word there is try. If we try to exercise authority to see if it will work, it won't work. And what he's saying there is you don't just want to try something, okay? He's talking about, and it, this kind of goes along with the one we just did. You have to have the word inside of you. It has to be who you are. It has to be all about who you are. You can't just say, okay, I just read it and I'm going to try to act on it. It's, it becomes who you are. And this is the point he was trying to get across. Is it, it has to be so a, a part of you that when you read it, you're led by the Spirit, and you when you take authority, it's it's just so natural, and, and you believe it. There's no doubting it. It's just so, so who you are that it comes out. When you read it, you're like, yes, and you believe it, and then you take the authority. Whereas some people, they were... I hope, does that make sense? Where they're just kind of trying out the words, trying to see if it will work. And that allows for doubt and unbelief to come in. So that's kind of where he was going with that. All right, we have number six. When people are in places like a church conference where faith is high and where the gifts of the Spirit are in operation, it's what for them to be healed? Expect it's easy. It's easy for them to be healed. And you guys will know that. You'll come into the house. We'll, we'll have a service where the anointing of God's flowing, the presence that is here. You come up and you feel that drawing and you want the healing and or whatever, free from something, whatever it may be, whatever it is that you came up for the line for. You feel the presence of God and it's, it's amazing. And it's easy to receive what God has, right? But then a lot of times people go out these doors, they get you know, back in their normal life and they're not allowing the presence of God back in their life. They're not cultivating um, the faith and, you know, walking it out um, day in and day out. And so he even went into things where people were healed in the services, but then they go out and a week or so later, they would get back right what they had because they didn't have the faith, they didn't have the walk with God to continue to keep a hold of it and it would come right back. And so we need to have the Word of God alive and living in us and keep walking those things out. 
All right, are we at number seven? All right. It's when a person doesn't have a solid, well, yeah, solid foundation of faith. It's when a person does not have a solid foundation of faith that the devil can easily put sickness back on them after they have been healed. And that is what I was just explaining. When they don't have that solid foundation of faith in the Word of God in them. And walking it out. We're, we're supposed to, you know, be acting upon the Word. It's, it's an action. It's something you have to do. Be doers of the Word, not just hearers. All right, number eight. The Bible differentiates between casting out devils and healing the sick. In some cases, a what must be cast out? Um, he has spirit, but a spirit must be cast out before a person can be healed. healed. And so that's what I was talking about earlier. In some cases, uh, a spirit must be cast out before a person can be healed. They had to come out of agreement, come out of alignment with that spirit before they could receive their healing. Because otherwise they were just holding on to it and they didn't want to release it. And some, he had come in contact just blatantly just said, I don't want to let it go. I really just enjoy it right where I'm at and I don't want to let that spirit go. Just that. <laughs> That's like if a fool was the said, do you want to be healed? Amen. Amen. Yes. And so we yeah, have I a free I think it's key, a couple of things. Uh, number one um, is that most of the time he's talking about true Christians that there's a spirit of oppression instead of a spirit of possession. And most of the time, it's something we've got to climb up on our back. It's not controlling us, but it's constantly whispering in our ear, which we're letting control us. And so, but possession is when it just takes over. And that's whenever we've forsaken God completely, no longer part of His, and that thing is controlling us. And so, but, and the other thing is, is because, you know, these things offer comfort a lot of these oppressive spirits, and they try, they tell you how right you are, and everybody likes to be right. And, uh, and how easy it is, and the spirit of justification is usually with them, of why you're dealing with all the things you're dealing with. And uh, then it would also be good to to realize that I've seen a lot of people, and it's been heartbreaking. And I'm not their pastor. I've been I've prayed for them, and I've seen God healing people coming out of wheelchairs, coming out of things that I prayed for them, and got to someone, and God's had me say, uh, "Are you willing to give up your disability if God heals you?" And their answer's been no. And I've had to walk right on by. Yeah. Because they would rather have, they want both. And, and it becomes a heart thing. But anyways, so. Amen, amen. I'm glad you brought those up. Because those are um, some things that he had, you know, he'd even touched on some of those things. And, and it, you, you, we've definitely experienced that. And I, I even know someone who was deaf one time and they were prayed for and they could hear again. But they didn't have the Word of God and the knowledge and understanding of the Word to hang on to it. And they are deaf again to this day because they, it came, you know, they didn't, weren't able to walk it out. And so it's sad to see that. It's sad to hear that, that people choose to hang on to those things instead of being free and have that healing in their lives. And in what he said about possession and um, oppression, yeah, as believers... Um, you, you just may have a, a spirit, a, and so it's not being possessed. It's not it, believers. We can be oppressed, and so I'm glad you brought that out because he had touched on that too. All right, uh, number nine. Is that where we're at? Number nine. All right. We can take authority over volatile situations we are in, and the spirit behind them has to what? Obey us. That's right. You always remember that. <laughs> That's the one. It doesn't want you to know who you are in God. It doesn't want you to realize what authority you have in God. Because then it realizes that you realize they have to obey you. And you're no longer their puppet. Amen. Amen. And that is Amen. where the whole battle lies. Can you Amen. take me down a little? Amen. I don't know about down, but I'll have to tune in later. Amen. So we can take authority over volatile situations we are in, and the spirit behind them has to obey us. That's awesome. All right, number 10. We are told to what the devil? Resist the devil. That was that verse we talked about. We are told to resist the devil. If we don't, someone else 
can't what resist the devil for us. So we are told to resist the devil. If we don't, someone else cannot resist the devil for us. It is our job to do that. Okay, so you can't just say, eh, that's not for me. <laughs> that's not for me. I'm not going to do that part. I don't want you to do that. No, it is our job to resist the devil, and he will flee. All right, multiple choice. I'm going to go through these quickly. All right, number one. Why is it that some Christians have not realized what belongs to them in Christ? Why is it that some Christians have not realized what belongs to them in Christ? D, all the above. They don't know what the scriptures say. They're listening to what others uh, they're listening to what others say and they're following religious traditions. Amen. All right. Two, how are we saved? See, by grace through faith. Amen. All right, number three. Okay, what happens when we become new creatures in Christ, according to 2 Corinthians 5.17? Yep, A it is. Our spirit being is made anew. Did you read those? <laughs> I know, I told this one to pastor last night, B, I said, I, I cracked up when I read it, it said, an amazing transformation takes place in our body. For instance, if we were bald, hair begins to grow. <laughs> that didn't happen to me, but I did look 10 years young. <laughs> yes. Cliff gave me the thumbs up up here, that's great. <laughs> yes, he did, he did. He, I, I, pastor uh, said many times how he looked younger after he, he got saved. And I believe it. I've seen pictures, so I I can agree with that. All right. I was 12, so 10 years younger would be <laughs> Wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Four. Uh, let's see. Why does it seem as if the devil doesn't flee when res we resist him in James 4, 7? This one can be a little hard, but he has B. We haven't firmly stood our ground. We haven't firmly stood our ground. <coughs> All right. We know we can for somebody else. We just don't believe it will for us. Right. <laughs> yes. 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 When you really know that he can and he will for you, then you can walk in authority. Amen. All right, last but not least, number five. What does Satan's defeat mean to mankind? In this one, it is D, all the above. So what, what does Satan's defeat mean to mankind? If a person is attacked with any kind of sickness or disease, that person can be healed. Lack and poverty no longer have to dominate our lives. And we don't have to fear any kind of danger. God is there to protect us. Amen. 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 All right. So that is the wrap-up of that one. So you are mighty in Christ. So remember to rule and reign over those areas in our lives. And we'll get our lives in line with him. And we can rule and reign in all those areas. And we can know now that the ball's in our court. We can't just let somebody else rebuke the enemy and what's going on in our life. We have to do something about it. So we resist the devil and he must flee. He will flee. When you take authority, when you stand your ground, when you live according to the word of God, he will flee from you. And so... Rule and reign this week as you go out. Amen, Pastor. This will sound funny until you get home. But uh, whining is not the same thing as resisting. Amen. <laughs> and a lot of people whine really loud and then say, but he didn't go anywhere. And I told him where to go and I resisted him. No, you whined at him. <laughs> You'll never tame a lion by whining at him. The only tame line by telling and having authority. Amen. Amen. So it's, it's kind of like, it's, I don't know what the word is, get that righteous indignation. Know who you are and be bold and be, be 
be ferocious about it, you know? Stand firm, stand your ground, all right? Tell me you're sick of him and you've had enough and, and over there, that's like feeding candy to a bear. You're just whining at him. When you say, I said get out of here in Jesus' name, I take authority over you, they're going to shut your mouth right now and you're going to go. Something happens. And sometimes, you know, he knows right where your pain level is and he'll keep you right there just enough that you don't open your mouth. Just enough on the ropes where you feel like you're the wounded guy where you can't say nothing. You'll just whine about it. He'll tell somebody, well, I tried that one time. Well, you never really tried it because you never really believed it. It has to try. If you're trying it, you don't believe it. That's right. And, and God's word is the truth, right? And he's not a he's not a man that he can lie. He's, he does not lie, and his word is truth. So when he says it, if something doesn't come to pass, that means, you know, whatever it may be, maybe we need to keep standing on the word and praying into it. Or when it comes to rebuking the enemy and standing, resisting and seeing him flee, we need to keep standing on our ground, right? That means we need to keep doing something. Don't give up. Don't give in. But we gotta keep standing on our ground because God's word is true. It doesn't change. All right, it stays the same. So that we need to recognize His word is true, and then keep standing, keep standing, keep standing on the word. I'll, I'll share this tonight, small group here. One of the biggest breakthroughs I ever had on all this as a young minister is one day when I came really honest with myself, and you know the enemy had me on the wall. I was starting to believe a lie that you know, okay, something's not working. This is wrong. That's wrong. What is it? Da, 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 da. And I finally, I just came down to the Word of God, the same thing I've taught y'all. I'm like, okay, God is not a man that he can lie, number one. And my spirit really didn't want to agree on that at that time because my spirit was all kinds of jacked up. And I said, okay, he can't lie. This is what his Word says. So God's Word doesn't fail. So I'm the weakest link in here. <laughs> And then I had to go, okay, if I'm the weakest link, now you all have heard me preach on all this stuff, over there, but I this this was a real life. I mean, I was heartbroken, ripped up, tore up, nine ways a Sunday over this. And I finally said, okay, his word doesn't fail. He, he, he's not a man that he can lie. And so then I must be the weakest. So, so then there's something that I'm not doing correctly for this thing to come to pass. And when I started shifting that, and walking in authority, you know, and it, he said, and I started realizing, and I also started realizing who I was in Christ, and what authority I did have, and things started shifting. Up till then, I'd been from a beggar's point of view, and I'd been begging things for happening. And but you know, God's word doesn't it, it doesn't fall short. It doesn't change, you know. And it's easier to justify and make excuses than to deal with our own issues that cause us from walking in authority. And, but once you deal with those things, you will walk in authority. And uh, so you just and by, and by all that, and simply all I did at that time was I went to the Word. What's the Word say? And I went down the checklist. And guess what? I got to me. And I didn't pass the muster. <laughs> and I had to deal with me. <coughs> Amen? That's free. Amen. That was good. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I believe we can all take something from tonight that could forever just change us. So take what God gave you tonight and hang on to it. Chew it on a little bit and let's walk it out. Amen. Amen. All right. But I, want, I also want to say for those that are finding themselves there, it wasn't a beat up time for me because I, I realized I didn't pass the muster, but I realized through Christ I could. Uh -huh. Once I found what the issue was, his word was right there to fix the problem. And I, I, and I cut off the spirit of education. I said, okay, he's not a man that he can lie. I can do this thing. There's no other option out there. He wouldn't say something that I could do that would be impossible. So the option of that is out. And the excuses were out. And so then I started saying, okay, what do I have to do to line up to be able to walk through it? And I can't do it in me, but I can do it through him. I know you all heard me preach, but that, that is where I, was. I found myself at one day a very long time ago. And I can tell you, he met me right right then and right there. And, and you know, some people find themselves there and they use it to beat on them because they tell you, he tells you, well, you'll never be good enough. It wasn't about being good enough. It was realizing who I was in, in Christ and breaking the lies of the enemy. 
Yeah, because God can't lie. He can't fail. And His authority is real. I feel like I'm speaking to somebody tonight, speaking some life into them. So just be encouraged, you know. And, you know, finding the weakest, finding where the issue at is the best thing you can ever do because then you can give it to God and He can grow you up in it. And you can realize the authority He has in that area already. But as long as you make excuses, you'll never grow up. And the enemy will just keep on beating you up there, keep giving you excuses. Amen. All right, that's real. Shut up. Amen. It's time to rise up. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, with that said, that was. Um, thank you for sharing that. God's so good. Amen. Uh, well, just a uh, quick announcement. Uh, we got Sunday morning, and then uh, when, next Wednesday Bible study. Um, we do have worship team practice tomorrow night for those that are part of that seven o'clock, and then uh, Sister Kathy Bentley will be with us. Uh, Saturday the 20th and Sunday the 21st. Uh, what time is service on the 20th? Did we say what time? Probably 6. Probably 6? Okay. All right. And if that changes, we'll let you guys know. But 6 o'clock on the 20th, that Saturday, and then um, <coughs> Sunday the 21st. So we're excited to have Sister Kathy with us in um, two weeks. So that said, you guys have a blessed week. Enjoy the rest of your time. And um, have fun living the Word of God. Amen? Amen. All right. Have a blessed night. You are dismissed. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hello. Yeah. All right. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hi, my dad. Hi, my dad.